Seriously, Cinderella is so annoying. The Story of Cinderella, as told by the Wicked Stepmother, by Tricia Speed Shaskin, illustrated by Gerald Guerle. You must have heard of me, the Wicked Stepmother. Not true. It's just one of Cinderella's wild stories. Not as wild as the one about the pumpkin and the fairy godmother. The real story, the true story, began with some chatter and some dust. All I ever wanted was a husband and a mansion. Before I married Cindy's father, my two darlings and I had met Cindy only a few times. The girl had seemed normal then. After I married Cindy's father, my darlings and I moved in. When I had just one foot on the front step, my dear husband kissed me goodbye and said, I'm off on business. He leaves often, Cindy said, but the animals stay put. They talk, they joke, they sing. They even help out, especially the bluebirds. Now, I don't mind a story, but I like facts, not fiction. Soon the girl was talking all kinds of hokey pokey. Once upon a time, Cindy said, one of the bluebirds became blue, not the color, the feeling. His friend had flown south. My darlings and I were stuck near the front door. I just wanted to put away my bags, and that's when I saw it, dust. Dear, is the whole house this dusty? I asked. I don't know, Cindy said. I'll give you a tour. In the dining room, Cindy told stories. In the study, Cindy told stories. Non-stop. Girls, I said, time to get to work. This place needs a good cleaning. Once upon a time when I was cleaning, Cindy started. Oh, boy. Cindy mopped the floor, but she finished so fast. My darlings had barely started. Did you know robins and sparrows are my friends? She asked, but the sparrows don't like the robins. Silly creatures. Once upon a time, one of the robins, Cindy dear, I said, why don't you go and wash the clothes now, hmm? But Cindy washed them so fast. How on earth did she do it? I had to find another chore for her just to keep her busy. If there's one thing squirrels love, it's washing clothes, Cindy said. The rats, though, would rather iron. I know, one day I... Squirrels and rats doing laundry? Quit telling such foolish stories, I said. Time passed, but nothing changed. In the garden, Cindy told stories. In the kitchen, Cindy told stories. At dinner, I couldn't hear myself think. Dear, please, I said, stop talking. But Cindy didn't stop. One day, a letter arrived. It was an invitation to the king's ball. The prince would surely fall in love with one of my darlings. Then they would marry, live in a beautiful castle, and one day be king and queen of all the land. Oh, stepmother, I have to go too, said Cindy. Once upon a time, a girl and a prince. And then, just like that, Cindy lost her voice. Imagine! It had to be from all that storytelling. What could I do? I told Cindy she had to stay home for her health. She cried, of course, but a ball was no place for a sick girl. She needed rest. Sometimes it's so hard being a stepmother. At the ball, my darlings twirled, they whirled, but then some strange girl waltzed in. Her gown was magnificent. I couldn't take my eyes off it. I wondered how much it cost and if my stream seamstress could copy it for me. 
the prince and the girl danced and pranced, my poor darlings were left princeless. A few days later, the prince made an announcement. A glass slipper had been left at the castle. The prince would marry the girl whose foot it fit. Our big chance! After visiting every other mansion in the neighborhood, the prince's valet arrived at our door. Me, me, said one of my darlings. No, me, me, said the other. One at a time, said the valet. Each girl tried, but the shoe didn't fit. Then Cindy pushed out a whisper, please let me try. The shoe fit. Cindy pulled the match out of her pocket. What? My darlings cried. Cindy pushed out another whisper. She said something about a pumpkin coach and mice that turned into horses. She even added a fairy godmother. Please, there's no such thing. But I still don't know where she got those shoes. A few days later, the prince married Cindy. Poor man. He had no idea what he was getting himself into. But we lived happily ever after.